Episode 8, The Green New Deal Disastrous economic interventionalist policies in the early 1900s helped spark a devastating global economic depression starting in 1929. President Franklin Roosevelt came to power during this time and used the Great Depression as a justification to mount a progressive coup against the political traditions of America. It is with this same ambition that his successors in the Democrat Party have sought to leverage concerns about global warming and fossil fuels to wipe out what remains of the American market economy. While the Green New Deal label has been attached to a variety of policy proposals over recent years, all of them share several common characteristics. First, the cause of the environment and boosting alternative energy sources allows for a takeover of almost all aspects of the American economy. Agriculture, for example, must be regulated to limit the bioemissions of crops, cattle, and other livestock. Building equipment must be controlled due to its impact on energy demands. Transportation isn't only a multi-billion industry in itself, but indirectly impacts the employment of everyone in society. Of course, in the modern political environment, environmentalist concerns must also take into account intersectionality and social justice, incorporating race, gender, sexuality, and all the rest into proposals of job guarantees, subsidies, and other forms of wealth redistribution baked into the specific proposal of the day. How would such a Green New Deal be financed? As was the case with the New Deal, the answer is through debt and central bank inflation. In fact, the size and scale of modern proposals have resulted in a renewed interest in what is called modern monetary theory, which contends that governments are free to spend and print as much money as they desire. In practice, similar policies have resulted in hyperinflation and economic devastation in nations like Argentina and Venezuela. Another common feature of Green New Deal proposals is how obviously unserious they are about actually dealing with climate change and carbon emissions. And this is the problem. The underlying agenda of the campaign to radically shift away from fossil fuels is not to protect the environment. It is to reform almost every aspect of modern society for political gain. Given the foundational role that cheap, dependable, accessible energy has played in cultivating both human liberty and human thriving, defending the energy sources the world relies on every day is directly related to defending civilization itself.